I'm Trisha Atkinson, and today I'd love to talk to you about my Action Research Project, completed as part of the graduate program in Education, Media Design, and Technology at Full Sail University. So what, you may be asking, was my Action Research, or ARP, about? Well, to answer that, let me give you a little background. I'm a high school art teacher, and the biggest problem I face, even with my high achieving students, is apathy and disengagement with content. With my ARP, I wanted to find out if an alternative learning environment, technology-based learning centers, could increase engagement levels in my students. I began by asking, what would happen if I created both physical and virtual stations with similar themes and ask students to compare their learning experience. I wondered if all the research I was reading about digital natives and 21st century learners was applicable to my students. Would their passion for social networking, media, and handheld devices transfer to education? I knew that my students would need structure to handle all the amazing technology-based art content that I was about to give them. I designed a website, Mrs. A's Art Learning Centers, with each subpage containing one of the eight stations. There was also a class blog, portfolio page, survey page, help page, and photo gallery. All of my prep work and web tools that I learned about at Full Sail were coming together, and I was ready to present them to my students. During the first half of my ARP, Cycle 1, students participated in the first four of eight total centers. Each was themed around a different art career and contained hands-on and virtual activities. Students were split into four groups and completed one station at a time. The hands-on segment was presented physically in a container with all the written directions and materials available. For the virtual activities, the website served as a hub to reach directions, examples, rubrics, and links to supporting documents and other sites. Students posted links to their personal digital portfolios on Glogster.com on the Learning Center site class blog. Their portfolios reflected artwork from each of the stations that they accomplished. Having links to the portfolios allowed classmates to have easy reach of each other's work to support peer discussion and feedback activities. Based on the research of literature started before the action research began and continued throughout, students' engagement levels are increased by the use of technology-based activities. In my action research, I found this to be true, but not by as much of a margin as I expected. On average, students said that their engagement levels were increased because of technology by 44% in cycle 1 and 52% in cycle 2. In 2002, Davies and Warall discussed that the use of technology to support art education fosters a fresh look at how we teach and how students learn. They stressed that whatever approach we're using, the focus must be on the process and content rather than the technology that was used. In cycle one, there were some issues with the presentation of instruction. Students were not adequately prepared to self-navigate successfully through this multifaceted format and struggled over the complex structure and convoluted requirements. I found that although some specific technology applications such as sumopaint.com and architectstudio3d.com were well received and mastered, students by and far preferred hands-on activities in cycle one by an overwhelming 85%. Verbal and survey feedback from students and my general observations were used to determine the reason for engagement levels in cycle one being lower than I wanted. 
The overcomplexity of activities, extreme variety of the technology uses, forced physical grouping, and students' hesitation to move away from hands-on project-based activities that they were accustomed to led to these results. I responded to this student feedback and other data by adapting the structure of the project for cycle two. Instead of forcing independent groups upon the students, which made them feel abandoned and overwhelmed, each station was introduced to the entire class. Instructor-based directions, demonstrations, and tutorials were given, and students were allowed to choose the method of completion for the topic, either hands-on or virtual. Students still worked within the station model online, which really aided organization in breaking the material into manageable parts, but the physical rotation seemed unnecessary to continue. Stations 5 through 8 on the Learning Center website were also a lot more easy to understand and to the point, with a focus on supporting links instead of all content displayed. In 2008, Jensen stressed that learner choice, frequent instructor feedback, and peer support fostered strong brain-based learning. Students' responses on the cumulative survey confirmed that they preferred being able to choose how to tackle a specific task, as well as having the flexibility to complete it in the allotted three class periods, balancing their regular project-based assignments. Students also found, by an average degree of 73%, that the simplification of the design of the activities increased their engagement level from cycle one. The online portfolio management on Glockstra became a group collaborative activity instead of individual. Students earned much better grades on station activities during Cycle 2 than in Cycle 1, with a class final grade average increase of 39%. I was excited that in Cycle 2, depending on the specific station, 17-33% to of students still chose virtual activities even when they had the choice of hands-on. Students in a secondary art classroom are enthusiastic about their normal routine, which includes project-based hands-on activities. They enjoyed some of the uses of technology when the directions were clear and the requirements well-defined. In the future, the structure of Cycle 2 is very productive, so I would definitely use it again, making sure to introduce students to basic skills in technology before starting to ensure that navigation does not get in the way of content. Even with all of the challenges that both students and I faced throughout both cycles, it seems that my initial predictions from the research were correct, and there is a place for technology in a successful art classroom. During my amazing journey through the EMDT program at Full Sail, many courses have influenced specific elements of my action research. Some of the major aspects included website construction, alternative learning formats and styles, Web 2.0 tools and online education extensions, gaming and education applications, and the organization of learning management systems. In conclusion, my action research and experiences at Full Sail have contributed enormously to my educational tool belt and my professional skill set as a whole. I'd like to thank everyone, especially my critical friends and wonderful students who helped and supported me along the way.